The breaking news just into CNN. President Trump has tweeted that he will not attend Joe Biden's inauguration on January 20th, as presidents have done for generations in this country to acknowledge a peaceful transfer of power. The president will not intend. Jeremy Dimon is at the White House now. And, and Jeremy, there's been this talk of a change in tone for the president or that statement yesterday finally indicating he supports a peaceful transition. But in fact, if he's not attending the inauguration, how is he supporting a peaceful transition? Well, he's certainly not sending the signal to the country uh, that he offered. You know, yesterday in that message, he talked about healing and reconciliation, a time to bring back calm. That was in the script that the president was reading. This is the real Donald Trump, what you are seeing here, yeah. uh, as we often do on Twitter. The president saying that he uh, will not be going to inauguration on January 20th, uh, becoming only the fourth president in American history not to attend his successor's inauguration uh, and the first president since 1868. Nine. Uh, so uh, certainly the first president in modern American history, recent American history, not to attend his successor's inauguration and only the fourth ever. And we should note that it comes at a time not only just days after we saw uh, this insurrection that happened on Capitol Hill where the president incited a mob of supporters to go to Capitol Hill and storm the halls of Congress, uh, but also in the wake of that we have seen a number of Republicans, a growing number of Republicans, encouraging the president to strike a more uh, uh, amicable tone and to try and bring about that peace and reconciliation. Even Laura Ingram, the mm -hmm. uh, conservative yeah. firebrand commentator, just last night was urging President Trump to attend Joe Biden's inauguration. And so I think this also uh, likely rules out the possibility that President Trump will be inviting President-elect Biden to the White House for that traditional visit uh, that typically happens days after uh, inauguration. Yeah. President Obama back in 2016 invited President Trump, I think it was one or two days uh, after yeah. his election to the White House. Of course, and gave briefings and, and acknowledged the, the victory, et cetera, a, a thousand different steps. David Gergen, the president already had as a parting shot an alleged incitement to a deadly riot, and now he will add one more 12 days from now by denying that step that presidents have done since the mid-19th century, attending their successor's inauguration. Tell us the significance of this to his legacy, what remains of it. Well, he's absolutely a sore loser, isn't he, Jim? And you contrast yeah. what, what he said last night, uh, and it just proves how false those words were last night mm. in, that, in that video. As a friend told me, it looked like a hostage video. Uh, that uh, you know, he was forced. <laughs> he was forced to make those statements, and he put, sent out tweets today that make it clear he didn't really believe what he was saying. Uh, and I think for him not to come is is, he, uh, is an ultimate insult. You know, there are a lot of people who are going to be glad he's not there uh, because he would distract a lot of attention. It would be a lot about the Biden Trump dynamic on the, yeah. on stage, and we'll be spared that at least. But nonetheless, this is wrong. Um, and if we're going to heal the country. Uh, we have to, Trump has to play a part in that and bring his base around to say we're going to be part of the normal politics and when we lose, we lose, but we'll try to take it back next time. I just, it would be so much better for the country. Mm -hmm. I think this is, you know, he's just so insulting in so many ways yeah. uh, and such a crybaby. It's just uh, disgusting. Let me ask you about the, the real security implications here. I, I've been speaking to folks yeah. in law enforcement and national security. Following Wednesday, they are deeply concerned about a repeat on Inauguration Day, that many of these same violent people will return, and that's one of the reasons why we're seeing the deployment of National Guardsmen uh, by a factor of six. Their presence in D.C. sextupled yesterday as a security precaution. They've ringed uh, the Capitol building with this much higher fencing, similar to what you have around the White House right now. By not attending, is the president further fueling folks like that, not, not just to not accept his loss, but to protest on that day? That's an interesting question, Jim. I'm not so sure about that. I, my hope would be, and, and of course, hoping anything for Trump to do that's decent usually is in vain, uh, but my, my hope would be that he would tell his followers to stay home, uh, that he's, gonna, he's not going to be there, they shouldn't be there. Uh, and I, I think that would, I think it would be, it would lessen these concerns. I, I, I must say, Jim, I think we're going to be in a period for months to come 
when higher security alerts are going to be prevailing all over Washington. It's just, don't you feel that? It's in the air. There's a, just a sense here. And I've, well, I've heard of a couple of stories yeah. over the last, just the last couple of days about the security, you know, um, the security concerns were skyrocketing. Yeah, it's not just a feel, David. I will tell you that yeah. that very risk has been mentioned to me because these groups have not disappeared. And by the way, yeah. dozens, of, hundreds of them who were in that building, Capitol, is still out and free. And I saw That's some it. of them wandering around yeah. the hill yesterday when I was up there. These groups have not disappeared. The threat has not disappeared in the view of U.S. law enforcement. Jer Jeremy yeah. Diamond, do we? So, so here is one last petty, insecure parting shot, and 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 damaging and dangerous one from the president. Do we know what else his plans are for these next 12 days? Uh, that is what they're going to start to contemplate now at the White House. You know, aides to the president have tried to get him not only to give up uh, his his attempts to undermine the peaceful transfer of power, but also tried to get him to start focusing on his last days in office, on his post-presidency. That is a conversation the president has been unwilling to have until now. So that is 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 beginning uh, at at this very moment. Um, w the question is how soon the president uh, will actually leave Washington. But ultimately, Jim, this really comes down to the fact that, uh, you know, while the president is under no obligation to attend Joe Biden's inauguration, what a symbol it would send to the country if he did. If he did and yeah. he clapped as President Obama clapped when President uh, Trump was inaugurated, mm -hmm. uh, and if he showed that sign to his supporters, his 74 million uh, voters, uh, as he likes to talk about, that Joe Biden was legitimately elected president and it is time to move on and heal the country, as the president said in this scripted message that clearly he did not mean yeah. just Listen, yesterday. It, it, He's clearly not going to do that, has shown no inclination to do that, and this is yet more proof uh, of that. D David Gergen, you have the prospect of an impeachment vote next week uh, in, the, in the coming yeah. days. Clear, clear, looks like a clear majority at least to impeach. Question as to whether you get to a trial uh, in the right. Senate. Tell us the significance of that in, in, in the coming week prior to his refusal to attend the inauguration. Well, I think I might add to Jim before going to that is well, also next week we may well have, or at least there's been a, there's been reports out in the last 24 hours that on the day before January 19th, the day before yeah. uh, Joe Biden takes the office, uh, that Trump will issue the pardons that we've all been yeah. sort of expecting, and they'll be massive. They'll cover the family, and possibly will cover him too. So that's going to yeah. be a big, big deal before this is over. But nonetheless, I, I think that the. Uh, uh, an impeachment without a conviction uh, sends a message to historians, and I think it sends a message to, to politicians. There are limits, and it, you're, you're, you're going to destroy your career, um, and you're going to destroy your reputation when you go over the lines, as this president has. The Wall Street Journal editorial was pertinent to mm -hmm. that, that there is a constitutional line, and he went over it. Uh, and has gone over it repeatedly, in my judgment. Um, but I do think that right now, if you had to ask, uh, uh, I, had, I had a friend of mine who's a scholar in the field, well-known person, we, who's a historian, and he, I asked him, where will, where will um, Trump wind up among his, uh, presidents on the rankings? And he said, well, he'd been in conversations about this and was having a hard time deciding whether Andrew Johnson or Donald Trump would be regarded as the worst president in American history. So t t Trump is already in a, in, a, in a party of five or less of terrible presidents. Uh, yeah. Well, of course, the, the, the trouble is, though, in a different information bubble, yeah. with still the, yes. the vast majority of Republicans based yeah. on public polling, he... Yeah. Yeah. He was a great president, you Not, know, despite, yeah. despite the facts. I mean, that's, that's the alarming reality. David Gerg and yeah, Jeremy yeah, Diamond, yeah. much yeah. to discuss in the coming days, and thanks so much yeah. for joining us now. Uh, the the headline you. there, the president has just said he will not attend the inauguration of his duly elected successor, President-elect Joe Biden, on January 20th.